today. Okay, our meeting is being recorded, which is good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and uh, so Kim is going to talk about several issues uh, that have to do with the Marianne Quarter uh, neighborhood grant. She's also going to talk about vandalism of the creosotes in Evelyn Hallman Park. Then I'm going to talk about our candidate, council candidate forum. We have some questions that we are going to submit. And I'll talk a little bit about why we do this. Um, and Molly will then talk about Motel 6 uh, and with the slant from the police department. Kim will finish up with things about the Desert Conservation Commission and a cleanup in Low Piano. And then we'll uh, have, take some announcements or comments and that finish our meeting. So, okay, I'm gonna turn this over to Kim Loza who is going to discuss the Marianne Quarter Neighborhood Grant. Okay, so um, last year we voted on the Marianne Quarter Grant to um, find a way to reuse an old Ramada where the roof had been taken down and had pretty much been dismantled, but it has good bones. It has a great um, concrete base and the pillars are really solid on it. And you're seeing a picture online if you're there. Um, I have some pictures on the table for those of us who are here, if they wanna look at those. Um, Anyway, there was a committee of us who um, worked on that after it was voted that this is what we wanted to do for our grant. It's gonna be a several year project um, if we are able to obtain the grants for it. We did succeed in getting the first grant and the first step was kind of a preliminary design just to give um, the committee that is making the decisions for the Marianne Quarter grant an idea of what we were thinking about. Um, and our first step would be to, to create an ADA path that goes down from the current pathway around the lake down to this old Ramada that we want to put into reuse. That, um, the next picture, Laura, if you want to go to that, is the... Um, picture of the pathway. Okay, that's a creosote sculpture. So if we can go to the pathway, which is the architectural drawing. Um, I don't think they're on there. Oh, it was. Um, anyway, the pathway um, we Sorry, decided Sorry, I don't on, think we have that one. I neglected to get that into your PowerPoint, guys. Sorry about that. Oh, that's okay. So the pathway actually is going to kind of swerve out to the north so that it's not a straight line. And the reason we did that was before the creosote sculptures were taken out, we were thinking we could connect eventually to that pathway where the creosote sculptures were. Um, and we'll, I'll talk about the creosote sculptures later, but the design has been done for this, the engineering has been done. So we're just waiting for the construction to start on that pathway. The next step would be to do a total design. And the, what we want to use this Ramada for is an education center. We're calling it the Pillars of the Community. And in talking about the Pillars of Community, we want to highlight the um, vegetation, the bird life, the wildlife, and also people that have been important in our community in the past and a little bit of history behind Evelyn Hallman Park. So the design of this is gonna be interesting because the committee had decided when we um, talked to uh, the, the gentleman that we contracted, um, Morin Swick, that we would use the same type of facing, the rock facing that's on the other Ramadas but we will have to leave space for the displays. And that the displays will come in another iteration and probably some of this construction because we have to figure out if the, if the electrical is still viable there 
if the water is still viable there because there was once water and electrical at that space. Now, up to this time, I have not heard any other suggestions for an application um, for the Marianne Corridor grant. So if anyone who is here to, right now or online who wants to speak up uh, with a suggestion um, other than going forward, um, rehabilitating this Ramada, um, please speak up now. And then we can take a vote if we wanna go forward with this. I'm going to say a little something too is that, that we have two neighborhood associations who are collaborating on this. So we have Pepico Park View and Pepico Park Way. And so we have done that. So this is Evelyn Holman Park. This is our local park in that. But also then we can join together and have more funding that can go towards a project like this. And so it can happen fast. It's gonna take time, but it can happen faster that way. And this will be something that I think it's a wonderful idea that folks have come up with. I wasn't in right when that was being discussed. So I'm, I'm, I'm giving you saying that I think it's a, it's a great thing. And also it'll be a great educational tool for the community. And I think it'll draw more people into the park, which a lot of them don't even realize is what the park has and you can fish in there and everything too. Um, the other thing I wanted to say about this because it has been brought up in the past is why don't we just have it put on the CIP which is the capital improvement projects for the city. And I tried to explain to people that to put it on the CIP, first of all, the parks department would have to decide where it is in their priorities. And second of all, it would be up to the council to decide whether to go forward with it eventually, but it would more than likely be put on a, if, if the parks department decided that it, it was something that they wanted to prioritize, it would probably be five years down the line. To me, this was the quickest way that we could get something like this accomplished. Um, there are two, Ramadas like this, and they have been the source of vandalism themselves um, because they've just been sitting there vacant. People have tagged them. They've had, you can see in these pictures that they've been, the tagging has been painted over. So if we can revitalize these with lights and an educational purpose, the idea is not to put a solid, completely solid roof on it so that it doesn't become a shelter. Um, but to put enough of a roof to cover from the weather and the elements, the um, areas where that we will have the exhibits, but leave the, le the rest of it just lightly shaded so that um, it, it's not a it does not become a shelter. Um, and that's our thinking um, going forward on this. But when it comes to the design process, we will put this out for um, comments um, before the design is, is accepted um, if we get the grant to go forward with the design. So any comments yet about what you wanna see or, or if you have another grant suggestion? Barbara? I had a comment. Oh, well, Don has a comment too. Go ahead, Barbara first. Don, okay, go ahead, Don. I just wanted to note that as part of that committee, um, at the last time that we met, we thought that the phase two would be both a design that would be for the following year or years um, and investigating the water and electricity for this. Right. So that would be the subject of the next year's grant. The second step, right? Right. I agree. I probably didn't describe it very well. No, no, no. And um, I would certainly support that or make a motion that we go forward with that. Let's have Barbara talk first and then we'll we'll uh, take your motion, okay? Well, I was, I was just gonna make a motion. <laughs> Do you want a second a motion? 
<laughs> okay, so Don wants to go forward with this and Barbara Sherman has, has voted a second. Okay, so first I would like to ask um, the Papago Park View people to raise their hands if they're in favor of, of doing this. Your Papago Park View. Okay, so we've got here one, two, three, four, five, six. Is there anybody that raised their hands online, Laura? I don't know what I have no, to do to raise my not. How do I raise my hand? If you hover over your name, um, it should appear. Or you could put it in, okay, I do see Laura's one. Laura's name is here. Laura's hang on, I have one hand here. Right. It's a little okay. hard to see. Um, oh, here, hand. I see Laura's hand. Yeah. Okay, Laura Stahlbeck solved it. Thanks yes, so there you go. Laura has raised her hand. I will unmute you. Here, Laura will talk. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? What about yeah. Stu? Um, I, I don't think Stu's online. Yes, he yeah. is. There's his oh. hand. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, well, Stu Stu's will here. be in the Papago, <laughs> the Papago Park way. So we've got so we've got six in Papago Park View, and so in Papago Park Way, Corey emailed me and she was in favor. Stu's in favor. Don's in favor. Um, and, and you're in Papago Park Way. Are you in favor? I thought I'm brand new. I thought I was Park View. Okay, so you voted in Park View. Right, but you're on the west side. So you're, you're Parkway. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay. And I'm Parkway. So that's four, five of us. Barbara, are you in favor? Yes. Okay, so that's six. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> thank you. Do you live in our neighborhood, Mel? I, I do not. Okay. Um, she lived there before. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so we got six for in both neighborhoods. Anybody against? Have you seen anybody, Laura? No. Okay, well that was easy enough. <laughs> okay, great. so we'll go forward with this this project again this year. Don, you want me to? We'll have the same committee. Do you think? Yes, I would um, think so. Okay. Okay, so we'll go ahead with the same committee and um, try to get this together and talk to Greg about the design. And Stu, I hope you're going to be um, working with him on that design part. Okay, Who? so go ahead. Who's working with him? Stu, did you say? I'm hoping Stu will. Happy to. Okay. Okay. Um, Okay, so the next thing I wanna talk about is the creosote sculptures. For many of you, you may not know what happened to them. Um, I tried to email everybody, but just they, in case. They might not know, because we have new people and the creosote sculptures in Evelyn Holman Park, right? Those are, those were put, those are, they're bronze sculptures and those were put in, they're about a, cre of a creosote and Kim will go into that, but we had, when we had come up with a master plan for Evelyn Hallman Park many years ago, uh, it was right when there was a downturn in the economy and that was put on hold. But before it had been put on hold, Tempe has requirements that with certain funding, part of it has to go to the arts. And so that had already been moving forward. And Evelyn Hallman, who the park is named after, because she used to do an awful lot of work in the park and in the community and all that. She always loved the creosote and always talked about the creosotes and the smell after the rain and that. And so the sculptures are telling a story about the creosotes. And so, um, uh, and they were, they actually were put into Evelyn Hallman Park as it was sort of right after it was named there too. So, okay, Kim. Well, and also they were put 
in the particular place they were because in that area, we have a 2000 year old creosote clone. And so it was to celebrate um, how long um, those creosotes had been there and um, extremely durable, especially in the last two years. For 10 years, they were not touched. Mm -hmm. They were there, people enjoyed them. I know, Stu, you think that it's a very isolated part of the park, mm -hmm. but there are actually during the day quite a few people that do walk that path. And one of the reasons they walk that path is because they enjoy walking by the sculptures. Mm -hmm. But after this, the second, it, the, the picture that you're seeing right now, that particular sculpture was stolen completely mm -hmm. in January of, of last year. So the city replaced it for us. And before it had been in even a month, part of it was cut off. And there, the other picture, more recently, they tried to take the whole sculpture of that bud. And after that, um, after the, um, Officer Williams, who is handling that particular case, um, and Rebecca Rothman, who's in charge of, um, the arts um, in Tempe, it made a decision that it was best just to take them out right now until we can figure out what we wanna do. So I haven't presented this to Rebecca yet and I wanted to get feedback on it. I was wondering what about putting them in by the Ramada that eventually when we get it um, redone, the one we were rehabilitating. Because in that case, we can put lighting on it. And we can, we've even, I even talked to Craig Hayden about possibly, and I don't know, I'd have to talk to the police about this. But when, when these are happening and when most of this vandalism is happening in the park is at night when nobody's in there. So I was wondering if some kind of a camera could be set up that, that if somebody, was you know starts in that area it would actually trigger an alarm to the police and you know somebody could be sent out to look at it we just got a system in our house and we have a camera on the too. I, I agree with you completely. and what's cool about it is it did it knows people so it's taking pictures in our backyard all the time and anytime bill goes out there it's taking pictures of him and then it it does a little box around it. So that somehow the camera is intelligent enough to detect people or instead of dogs and, and that. So I, mean, I think having something that would be uh, tracking specific people might be a little concerning, but if it's just motion in general, that, that mm -hmm. would be and, and only between certain hours, I think. Right. You know, right. obviously during the day or, or even twilight. You know, um, a lot of people go into the park walking and stuff. So there's activity even around sunset. I know I'm in there at sunset a lot of times. Um, but uh, in, early in the morning, I mean, I, I this happened before I was in the park and I go in the park in the summer at 5.30. And during the winter, I'm in there usually 6, 6.30. So this had to have happened during the night sometime. So having certain hours that it's between, I think would be, you know, and, and I don't even know how this is possible and it'd have to work out, but even having the lighting on it from that Ramada, I think would be helpful. And we can work that into the design. Stu said you, you like that idea? Stu, did you say you like that idea? I, I think- maybe. I think Stu might have left. Oh, okay. Okay. He did say that and he was smiling. <laughs> okay. So what are, what does everybody else think about that? We could include it as um, a consideration in one of our grants, perhaps. Well, I think we could, in, if Rebecca is okay with it. We actually have someone raising their hand too, Jackie. Okay. If we could include the lighting as part of the design. 
I think the camera part is something that would have to be worked out with the city and the police department if if it's at all possible. But you know, we can. I, I have to talk to Rebecca anyway and see what she thinks about that idea. Um, we will have an ADA path down to that area, which is something that she likes to have when there's any artwork. So she may be in favor of it also. Does anybody have a objection or see a problem with that? Actually, I just had a question about that. Okay. Um, uh, more importantly, that's why I didn't vote when you guys were doing it. Cause my concern is, is just seeing um, the North end of town and the experience that I've had with the vandalism and all of that is do we have enough police staff to even do that? Because I know in our area, when we call for um, police, a lot of times it's very delayed because there isn't enough for appropriate staffing, obviously, given what's going on in the world. So I just didn't know if that's even really, is that realistic? Well, if we, we're gonna talk about this later about a possible substation. Because one of the problems right now is there has to be somebody in the area and Molly can talk about this a little bit more too. Um, it, it takes them a while if they're coming from the, the station on Apache. So, um, and I know I've run into that with different things going on. I mean, I'm always in the park catching people doing things they're not supposed to be doing. Um, so that's gonna be one of my questions actually at the candidate forum is, is what can we do to give us better um, oversight um, in, in the preserve because it's such a large area and um, it's a lot of people treat it as a free-for-all. So um, I, that's a good question. And that's, that's something, like I said, we'll have to bring up um, with the police and with the city um, going forward if, if we decide that's where we're gonna put them. Um, I don't want to lose them in the park because the whole idea behind that artwork was that those creosotes are so iconic. And like I said, for 10 years, we had no problem whatsoever, none. Um, so we'll have to see. You know, and let's no. say the police do decide that it's okay to have a camera. That could be set up only when the park is closed, which is nighttime between those hours. We don't have to broadcast that, but there shouldn't be people there in the middle of the night over by them. So they, I think a timer could be that way. I understand because I believe in privacy too, and, and you wouldn't want that going all the time. But, but I, I think it'll take a meeting, Kim, right, with, with the police and, and with uh, the city. And, and that's down the line because we'll have to get further on the, the um, there's a lot of times to discuss that. It's mainly the where we wanna put those sculptures that, that I could go to Rebecca because she wanted to talk about it after the first of the year. So, um, so that's pretty much down the line, any type of a camera. Um, yeah, I don't think it's time to put them back. We're, we're having. Yeah, until we get a, a better idea of, of how we can control some of this vandalism. Right. So, but what do you, does anybody have an objection to putting them there instead of putting them where they originally were? Perhaps Stu has um, some input on this. He's, yeah, thanks. he's my back. Internet, my internet just went out. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. yeah, we can. Yeah, so I missed a couple of minutes of the discussion. Was, was the decision to put them near uh, the Ramada? That's what we're talking about, a possibility. We still have yeah. to talk to Rebecca and the city about that, but right. that was my going to be my suggestion is possibly putting them there so that when we get the Ramada, we wouldn't put them back until we got the Ramada built or re mm -hmm. revitalized, but then we could at least put a um, lighting on them right. and possibly a camera down the line. That's, that's still up in the air. Did, did but I you, think the lighting would be um, easy to do. Sure, that would sure help. Uh, did you discuss like a motion control lighting system? So you wouldn't have to um, work all night long? Yeah, that's, I, was, I had mentioned um, 
we have a system in our backyard right now, and it's interesting because it it it's but only it sees, and, uh, a, the website. It, sees a, it sees a person. It it won't pick up our big dog. It actually distinguishes between that and it picks up people. And if we did it uh, when the when the park is supposed to be closed anyway, which is at night, then I think it'd be probably a good idea. Barbara, you had your hand up. Yeah. Um, a couple, a couple of things. Over the years, people have objected to lights because of the destruction for the, this um, um, dark sky. They interfere, interfere with animal, the animals in the park. Just, so that's one one issue that needs to be brought up. And we do have a history in the park of cameras being used. And it was a suggestion for the police to go back in the dark ages. Um, like before the turn of the century. And so they have been used and we should, before proceeding, we should really do the research to find out how that would, how effective that was and whether that was effective at all. Well, I don't think the lighting on the, the sculptures would be too bad because we'd be able to do down lighting and we have lighting already in, in the Ramadas. And it's the blue light that affects animals and bird trafficking. Um, a, more of a warm or a yellow light does not seem to be as interruptive. So that's something we could definitely look into when, when we're doing the design into what is the least disruptive type of light for um, the wildlife. Um, and that's definitely a consideration. So. Yeah, and I've got connections at DBG, so um, we can always uh, talk to somebody at DBG and see if they have a suggestion for us on that. And I'm sure Fish and Wildlife would have suggestions for us on that as well. Liberty Wildlife, we've, we've got a lot of people we can, we can uh, talk to about that. Um, so any objection to suggesting the, the different placing and when the Ramada is done to those creosote sculptures? I would just uh, add the possibility of locating on the west side of the pond uh, where there's a lot of foot traffic. Uh, but of course it would require some lighting there as well. And the city doesn't seem ready to put that in, but uh, there's probably three or four locations all around the pond that uh, have a lot of traffic uh, that should be considered in addition to the Ramadas, but I I would support as a first choice the uh, the Ramadas and then consider some of the other locations with a study of some sort. Okay, the the only problem I see is again because this has all been happening at night after the park is closed. I don't think there's any place that has a lot of traffic, and that's why I was thinking where we could get a light on them would be you know, whether it's a motion sensor light or some type of light would be helpful. Yeah, well, you know, another possibility might be along the Kellops, uh, along the sidewalk where you already have uh, street lights uh, lighting that area. In other words, on, on the uh, north side of the wall along the Kellops rather than the south side where they've been before. That's a possibility, well, that's a possibility. So what I'll do is I'll contact Rebecca and see if I can set up a meeting. Um, and if Stu, would you like to be part of that? Sure, if happy. I can set up a time with you? Yeah. Okay. I've got a ton a lot. If it's virtual, it'd be a little easier. Okay. Okay. It probably will be considering the, uh, the COVID that we're in right now. <laughs> Most sure. things are going virtual again. So, uh, but I'll talk to her and see okay. where we are. Okay, that's done for me. Now it's on to Darlene. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm gonna talk about the North Tempe, uh, Tempe City Council candidate forum. Uh, we have had candidate forums for many of uh, uh, the prior elections in that. We even had them many years ago here, a few at the, uh, multi-gen center. But 
we have this, it's gonna be televised. We have found that the candidate forum really has helped us in North Tempe. We submit a couple of questions, two or three ahead of time with background to the candidates. So you're not asking a question and you, they really don't know, you're sort of catching them off guard trying to, we wanna know how they really feel about some of these issues. And we did this, especially with the Papago Park Preserve. We had worked very hard trying to get a Papago Park Preserve. There was a big developer that wanted to actually put homes in, Pap in our part of Papago Park. And um, so we asked, we put together background about how there was a land patent, how that land had been given to the city of Tempe for the citizens. We did a lot of legwork and put a lot of things together. We actually even got uh, things to protect the park in the general plan when it was developed. The, I think it was the 2030 general plan. And so we did a lot and then we finally with the, and we actually had petitions that were signed that were delivered to the mayor and council about making the, our section of Papago Park a preserve. So when we asked the question uh, at a candidate forum, everyone, two people running for mayor said they would support it. And all the council members that were running all got on record that they would support a preserve in Papago Park. We actually took it a step further and asked them to send it to the voters because sometimes you get something done and you go, okay, Ray, they, they do a proclamation. The mayor will, and the council will do a proclamation. But with a proclamation, another mayor and council down the road can undo it. If it goes to the voters and it's approved, it takes a vote to change it. So we have, uh, one other thing that we were really instrumental in, and that is the county island. The county island for years has been a big problem. It's still a problem, but it's getting better. <laughs> Part of it's getting better, let's put it that way. So we had given a lot of information, plus we did cleanups in the county island for years. And uh, big, big cleanups with the city of Tempe. We had promoted them. They even had chain gang people that would come and help the days that we were doing the cleanups. We've been instrumental in having meetings with Maricopa County and the city of Tempe over the county island. So we used all that information, pictures, background, and presented the timing was right economically, but Tempe had never really, they had tried at different times to do the annexation. Barbara knows a lot about that too, but it had never happened. And so we made that part of one of the questions for the uh, candidate form. And one of the candidates that was running took the bull by the horns actually, and got a couple of other council members involved. Uh, the, she was told by the former mayor that it would never gonna happen and it, she helped make it happen. So anyway, this year we have three questions and the questions, one of them is about the degradation of Scottsdale Road. I have finally finished the questions which that can be reviewed and modified in some way. I've got to get them done and out to the candidates. I had told them by tomorrow, but, um, I put this together and I will be, I have, will be sending all three questions out to the same mailing list I sent about this meeting so you can all review them. The degradation of Scottsdale Road. I'm just gonna touch a few points on this. Um, I start out with many North Tempe neighbors are avoiding North Tempe businesses along Scottsdale Road. Many neighbors, especially women, feel unsafe along Scottsdale Road. We're thankful to the Tempe police presence and the patrols. However, their frequency in North Tempe highlights many issues along Scottsdale Road. You see them a lot. You see them, uh, there's lots of calls for service and that along Scottsdale Road. Just think what we would, it would be like if we didn't have them. I said, thank you, Tempe PD. Uh, back 2019, I started sending letters from NTNA about 
concerns in that along Scottsdale Road. A lot of it had to do in the county island too. We had a lot of homeless in there that were camping in the middle of the road. There were people camping up on the berm under the 202. There were instances where women were being raped in that along that area. And the Tempe PD worked very hard with us and continues to and understands we have a real problem on Scottsdale Road with all the homeless and that. So one of the concerns we have is the uh, Motel 6. People have been giving vouchers to homeless to stay in Motel 6. Okay, but there's no supervision there. There's no oversight. They're just, and how many people to a room? How many, all, all sorts of things. And so, uh, Motel 6 parking lot in the back of the motel is unsafe. I have a daughter who gets inquisitive like I do and she was actually told that, that that's very unsafe back there. Um, we have a lot more homeless along Scottsdale Road. We have a lot of problems with jaywalkers, especially coming from Motel 6 over to the Quick Trip and Motel 6 to the Ramada. The Ramada is fighting with issues of loitering and prostitution. There's lots of activity, like I said, back and forth. We are hoping that the Motel 6 and the Ramada properties can be upzoned to make their property more valuable so that they will sell it and that a developer can come in and put we need uh, the high end to mid to workforce housing put in in those two locations that will help different businesses to come back to Scottsdale Road. Uh, we've got real problems with the bus stops and people, they, they actually took the seats out of the bus stop in front of Quick Trip because there was such a homeless problem. There was a huge encampments going on in there. Quick Trip has always been a great place to go. Now you have to worry because people are using the sinks to wash in Quick Trip in the bathrooms. Uh, shopping carts and gatherings are very frequent around where the air hose is. The air station's always vandalized. And even after they took the bus benches out of that bus stop, they are, people are coming back in and, uh, and sitting on the ground and that. Our Pollock Center is, they have the closed and vacant big lot store. Um, Food City has new owners, but it's the same store. Younger homeless women and homeless men are being seen. We've even had some rundown RVs parking in the parking lot. They have a brand new Circle K. Uh, quick, the Starbucks, People used to congregate and sit outside. A lot of people are avoiding that now because of the homeless issues and that. Uh, the Starbucks closed the restrooms down when we had the coffee with the cops. And my husband knows firsthand because he had to use the restroom and he walked over to Circle K and that was a real mess. It's become a real homeless haven and people are in there doing all sorts of things they shouldn't be doing in there. And so it's interesting because Circle K in Scottsdale on Hayden Road reports that they do not have a homeless problem. Yet our brand new Circle K has got a big problem. North Tempe's area along Scottsdale Road, we used to have a Wolco department store. This is years ago. Drug Emporium, La Fonda's Mexican restaurant, Tandy's leather shop, a movie theater, map store, we had a thrifty drug with ice cream counter, a real neighborhood grocery store, carpet and drapery store, and that. Now we have smoke and lingerie, bikini beans. Um, I have got to add on uh, Dream Palace, Sunday Goods, Elite Pond, vacant stores, and a Del Taco that can't even open, and another dispensary that's trying to go in next to Dream Palace. North, huh? That's what? A new dispensary would also be good, I would feel. A second one? Yeah. But they have, they have regulations. They're supposed to be so far apart. Right, as long as they're following the regulations. 
and they're and they're not. There's there's someone who the it's the old JD's building, and they've actually su were suing Maricopa County because they they want to go into that location and they're holding it, but they have to in Tempe they have to be a mile apart, the dispensaries, and. Um, yeah, they have to be five, 500 and some feet apart and they're gonna be like a hundred. They, it's, it's close to, not quite a quarter mile, but they, so, and they're too close to the park and they're too close to a school. Um, to a school and, and well, in, in Maricopa County has an ordinance that they're not supposed to be close to an adult business. They got the first one that went in, Sunday Goods, which from what I understand has a much better reputation than that. They, they um, got two variances. The variances was that it was too close to the park and too close to the adult business. They got that variance and came in. Michael Crow is really concerned because you have all these freshman students that have to stay on campus and it, lots of them, it's the first time away from home too. And so he, they had actually written a letter before the legalization of all marijuana asking that Tempe did not locate a lot of dispensaries close to ASU and that. So we already had, the closest one is that the Sunday goods. And so there's so much money involved and, the per, and so this, my, uh, Brasky is trying to get the second one in. It would be a real district though, because it would be a dispensary, a pawn shop, a strip club, and a dispensary. The, the other um, reason that we're not really in favor of that one is he wants to put in a growing- um, In the basement. In the basement. So we have concerns about the chemicals that are used for a, a growing situation like that. And also for the smell because we have a lot of events that go down there, like this next weekend, the Rock and Roll Marathon. And you have those smells emitting that these athletes are gonna be breathing in. So it wouldn't be just a, um, a dispensary, it'd be a growing facility. And I know myself, I would rather use marijuana that's been grown in a healthier environment than in the basement of an old building. Yeah. So and, those are, those are some of the concerns we and, have about that too. And, and they are on Tempe sewer system and that there already. That most of the county island is not, but that along Scottsdale Road they are. And so that that is a two story building. It used to be rock or country western below and rock and roll above. It's huge in that. But where are they drying? Where are they? There's it, it's and they're too close. They have they re, they need three variances that's in order to do this and because they're too close to another dispensary, but they're still suing and they're, they feel that they're going to get it in in a court and that so. Um, and. What is? So, oh, because there's a crossover. There is a crossover because there's a lot in here about the about homeless and that. But that's one of our problems is that it's not being taken. You know that we're. I wish that if Tempe had a facility in that, and and they were housing people in that. There's oversight, there's help and everything. But right now we have a big free-for-all free going on through some of this. And Molly's gonna address, we'll see what she says about Motel 6 and that. But we know we've been in the Ramada. The Ramada is, is people go, well, we don't want certain things in your neighborhood. Well, folks. We've got two questions here addressing the same thing. And I thought some of the presentation was going to be the presentation of um, buildings, businesses, and the, literally the center of Scottsdale, of Scottsdale Road is Tempe. It looks as nice as South Scottsdale's Tempe. That's, that's, that, that's a good point. Slant it that way more. Yeah, I agree. And then put the homeless more in the other one. I know I've been having trouble when I, 
I will do that, okay? We seem to have lost sound online. I don't know if there's something going on there with the internet, maybe. I think you guys just came back. Still no sound, though. I can hear you. Laura Stolberg, I can hear you. I can hear. I can hear you talking. Yeah, I could briefly, briefly cut okay. out, but it sounds like it's better. Okay, cool. Hello. Hello. I think all of us on Zoom can hear each other. We just can't hear them. <laughs> oh, that's, I think that's correct. Yeah. So people yeah. in the meeting, maybe something happened to Darlene's computer, maybe? Is it plugged in? I don't know. Because all the <laughs> I mean, Zoom people can only hear each other. <laughs> yeah, maybe somebody pulled out the cord by accident <laughs> with their foot or something. I do that all the time. Laura, <laughs> thank you for doing this at night. <laughs> I'm trying. You know what? The good news is I recorded it, so I guess we'll hear that. I'm hoping. <laughs> Can't swear to it, but I'm hoping. <laughs> um, oh, you know what it is? Darlene is no longer on. Okay. We need to hear Molly Enright. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think who would answer. Mo I'm going to text Molly, you guys. Awesome. I asked some questions on the chat, but I guess nobody else is seeing them. Yeah, or, because if Darlene's iPad is disconnected. She's offline. Yeah, right. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Good question. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, it went really well up until now. 
thank you ladies for that. Is there anyone that was at that meeting you guys know that might be um, have their cell phone handy and would actually see it? Because Molly's not going to. Kim might. Yeah, good, good call. Do I have Kim in my phone? Let me see. I've got Kim. I can. Oh, good. Because I don't think I have her cell. <laughs> oh, geez. We were doing so good. <laughs> Oh, I can't, I sent a message to Kim. Hi. Oh, okay. Because, yeah, the Zoom people can all talk or have been, and we've lost contact with you all. Okay. Okay. All right. I'll try to contact people. Oh, okay. We haven't smelly in right yet. Um, okay, all right. Someone's if someone's there with their cell phone, they could probably just put it on speaker. Question two having an overlap. And so it's determined we're gonna make question two question number one. And we're gonna focus more on um, the bit the small businesses and the aesthetic of Skepto I can't, I can't convey all that, <laughs> but we'll get, hopefully we'll get back in touch. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Are they trying to reconnect, Don, or do you know? Yes, um, they their Darlene's computer lost all of its power. She had charged it up. They've gone to get a cord. 
which is maybe <laughs> just in the parking lot. And at the present time, they're talking about questions for the voters, I believe. Got and it. Kim was trying to explain that to me, and I said, there's no way I'm conveying that. <laughs> Can't so blame you. She said that they should be up in moments. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. We don't want to miss Molly. Does anyone that's still on know, I heard her talking about that they want to do like the strip club um, dispensary and all that. Where were they wanting to locate that on Scottsdale Road? Well, they said JD's. Is that where that, um, it's like a oh, clothing design clothing business? Jeez, I don't I really know. Like yeah, I thought she said JB's and I thought, well, maybe they're talking where that Coney Island places that used to be a JB's years ago. Oh, it's, it's, but that's not too cold. It's down in the County Island, south of Curry Road, east side of Scottsdale. South of Curry. So is that the, oh, the, the design business, over by the, the clothing? Gap. Yeah, by where the clothing outlet is or design thing or whatever. Ah. Okay. Oh, that's a lot of businesses doing that in one area. Oops. Folks, yeah. I got to go, but thanks for the information. Thank you. Thanks. Jackie, where do you live? I live in Concord Village off Scottsdale and Continental. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we have tons of issues. That's why I was... <laughs> I was really interested in seeing what they were going to say tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was hoping when she was asking for the questions for the um, city council is my main concern is, yeah, it's, you know, it's hard in the safety issues of having, you know, and I, I have a different opinion on homeless versus drug addicts. Like I, homeless is when you can't afford a home. Drug addict is when you choose to be a drug addict and homelessness is a secondary effect. But um, it's just driving from McKellips to the freeway. I cannot tell you how many times, like literally I've had to slam on my brakes and skid because somebody just all of a sudden hops out of that median right in front of Motel 6. Yes. And, and they're so high that you, I mean, you know what I mean? So now I like intentionally go like 30 miles an hour because I'm like selfishly, I'm like, if I hit somebody and kill them, like. You know, yeah. they, they go on to whatever is after this life, but I have to live the rest of my life knowing I killed someone, you know, right. and I'm like, if they're not going to do anything about either, then they need to do kind of like where Dutch Brothers is, where they put some type of crossing or something that'll stop that because it's only a matter of time before something like that happens. True. True. I do Maybe. have, I do have a little something to add to that, um, just tangentially, I guess, but um, the police department has identified five target zones for Vision Zero, kind of like creative enforcement, like what are we going to do? And that is definitely one of them. So I am scheduling meetings in February with your neighborhoods to um, talk about the issue with police and traffic engineering and the neighbors. So you'll see that coming real soon. Good. And my other thing was, is, is anyone going to ever address the fact that the whole reason that those homeless were pushed to Scottsdale Road is because of a councilman? Like, it, uh, yeah, I, I grew up in South Scottsdale and it's, it's, it's kind of sad to just see the difference that a mile makes, you know? Right. So can't they, you know, like if by the university, they put um, bushes that have like bougainvillea that are very prickly in the middle to yep. discourage people from going across the street. Yep. That's being yeah. discussed for sure. Yeah. Either that or just remove the foliage altogether so that you can see the person in the middle and the driver can make an intelligent decision whether or not to like move lanes or slow down or you know what I mean? It's just because you can't see them because that foliage is so thick in the median. But then it's really ugly. 
It is, but I mean, I, mean, I, I know that that's better than killing is, someone. Yeah, is going anywhere anytime soon. That's what's sad is that is just, I mean, if there was another way to get to the freeway, and a lot of times actually I'll go down and go to McDowell to 52nd Street and get on that way just to entirely avoid that area. And it's sad because I used to like going to the nail salon there. And um, that liquor store has been there forever. And that guy always carried like everything if you were looking for something special and I won't patronize that area anymore. Where is that along those businesses? Um, yeah, I near... think it's Hancock. It's like right across from the QT mm -hmm. in that ah. like little, I feel bad for those businesses. That little like um, nail shop and stuff, they put a lot of money into their business. And I know a lot of like girlfriends and stuff that won't go there anymore because of how bad it is down there. Oh, that it hasn't that one closed? I go to the one that's right across from the QT. That's oh, then that's... maybe they closed that one. I haven't oh. been there in so long since all of this started. I stopped going because I'm like, I'm it, you take your life into your hands trying to get a manicure. I think it's empty. Do you does anybody yeah, know bad. if Udapai closed the Indian restaurant? Oh, I don't I know. Think that used, used to be there. South China Buffet, right? Then yeah. that used to be South China Buffet. But yeah, you, I don't know. It's yeah, good pie here down there. Yeah, I, I think that's still open. It's an Indian restaurant. I haven't seen I their see sign it. lit. Oh yeah, maybe not that. Like I said, I try to avoid that area at all costs unless I have to go that way. Well, wow. if that is the area right by the Motel Six that has the homeless people receiving vouchers they they probably don't want to be having a operating a business there because that's right next to motel yeah. six that's yeah i don't guess. blame them i can only imagine yeah. yeah and the police are such short staff that i i mean i don't know how those businesses do it i don't know how any of them it's sad it's very sad so I'm hoping Molly's going to get on here so she can give you a more official update. But we recently met with um, the Cavalier Hills folks, and uh -huh. we've, we've put on two more um, homeless outreach people that are dedicated only to North Tempe. And PD has also, uh, they're working on a substation uh, in a, a rental kind of, you know, a storefront operation right there on Scottsdale Road. So they are making some huge headway. <laughs> Um, I wish I could go into a little more detail for you, but hopefully Molly will do that. Yeah, um, they're, they're, they've made a whole lot of progress in the last month. They've assigned some uh, of their personnel, the police, to actual like locations within North, Temp North Tempe to try and kind of focus their efforts a little bit. And they've made a whole lot more contacts than they had in the past month. So, so were they able um, to get these people into resources or something because, no, or did of. they just move them along and then no. it becomes someone else's problem? You know, it, I, I'm not sure I can answer that question. I know that they've had some success, but it's That's a very right. long-term kind of thing. They have to develop yeah. relationships and all that. Right. But it seems to have gotten better in the last couple of weeks, but it, there's also some indications they're moving to the park so uh, yeah yeah i mean i think if it was just homelessness it would probably be a lot easier right. to address but i don't think homelessness is the problem it's drugs i mean yeah and with the stresses of today's world i mean it's sad because mm -hmm. i see even some of the kids i went to high school with you know and i see them walking down scottsdale road and they're drug addicts now and i'm just like yeah. what do you do uh -huh. you know there yeah. is no mental health in this country, so good luck on that. And yeah, that's just right. not a Tempe problem. That's a country problem. Mm -hmm. yep. You're right. So could you, who did you, you said that they added, some organization added two more people for? Yeah. the Hope Outreach Team. They're a city department that does homeless oh, okay. outreach. Yeah, so they're dedicating um, new staff. Or, you know, they're hiring people. Okay. They're mm -hmm. really, they're, the city's putting a whole lot of effort in. I mm -hmm. don't really have all the details, but I was um, at a meeting we had over uh, at Lane Caraway's, I don't know, was it two weeks ago? Um, you know, sort of talking about all these same things. So I'm pretty sure that's what Molly's going to update you guys on. 
Okay. We get her back. Hey, you, uh, I'm sorry, this is, it, it's um, Dawn, Dawn that's speaking. No, um, this is Laura with the city of Tempe. Oh, Thanks. Laura. Okay, I'm yeah. the other Laura that's present. Oh, hi, Laura. Hi. Uh, so <laughs> I wrote, uh, I put in the chat, and I'd like to just be able to ask those questions verbally. D who is giving the homeless vouchers to stay at the Motel 6? You and know, then they're- not Sure, someone's yeah. calling right now, though. Let me see okay. if that's... Okay. This is Laura. Hello? Oh, goodness. This is Laura. Well, don't know who that was. Let's see. They oh, want they, to renew, to get... they want to renew your warranty. <laughs> no, now I'm getting a text from Kim. We need your passcode to get back on. Oh, uh, Papago. On. Yeah, Papago. Yeah. This is Laura. Hello, is this Kim? I can't hear you if it's you, but the passcode's Papago if you're someone that's on this meeting. <laughs> if you want to renew my warranty, I'm not interested. <laughs> okay, bye. I don't know who it is, but they, they can't hear me or they can't talk or something. I texted it to her. Oh, gosh. What a day. This entire day has been this way, people. <laughs> I'm sorry, oh, it's Monday. Yeah, it sure is. Technology is good, but it's bad too, huh? <laughs> Feels like Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hmm. I don't, did you have another question? Maybe I can answer, probably not, but I'll try. So that's such a shame about those sculptures. Oh, mm -hmm. it's tragic. I wish I wanted to suggest I had had my hand raised and I put it down because the conversation continued on, but one gentleman had essentially read my mind. I thought it would be so much better to put the Ramada and the sculptures closer to McKellips and um, college so it would get greater visibility for people driving by even at night so they could at least if they saw some activity they could hopefully would report it for whatever purpose if the police are able to respond quickly or not. And because I've never seen, I've never been to that park. Okay. What the heck is happening? Someone's trying to FaceTime me and I still can't do it. Oh, what the heck. I'll text Kim. Yeah. Hi, this is Anna Stalbitz. Can you hear me? Yes. I'm going to leave the meeting now.
Okay. We appreciate you tuning in. No, thank you very much. Some of the, I'm trying to share uh, some of the information with uh, residents of Bluebell Lane in Marlboro Park. So I'll stay tuned the next time. Thank you so much. Okay, and Anna, I'm gonna try and post the recording of this meeting such as it is. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think I will post it on the neighborhood meetings page. So if you go to tempe.gov forward slash neighborhood meetings, I'll put a recording there. Hopefully there'll be something there. Um, so in case there's uh, more discussion, you can see it later at your convenience. Tempe.gov and then what? Uh, forward slash neighborhood meetings, all one word. Okay. I'll, po I'll post it probably sometime afternoon. It takes a little while for Zoom to download, but I'll get it there eventually. All kind of new for me, but it's very interesting and I really appreciate all the work. So I'll talk to you later. Thank you. Thanks for joining. We appreciate okay. you. Okay, bye-bye. Laura, are you there? I Where am. You? Okay. Yeah. Got you on my phone. You want to pass it awesome. over to? You. Yes, I'm gonna. I'm gonna plug it in just to make sure. I'm gonna go ahead, Molly, come sit here. We I'm can gonna you plug it so that my phone will not die either. So. Molly's going to talk, so I'm going to hand her my phone so you can hear. Okay. Good job, guys. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. Can you hear me? Okay. Loud and clear. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Laura. Everybody, I'm Molly Enright. I uh, work for Tempe Police Department in the city of Tempe. Um, I'm also a Tempe rep. So it's always a marvel to me grassroots politics at its best. And I'm very, very grateful for all of you as a resident, as a government employee who is blessed to work for the city um, because everything that you do in the time that you're contributing and continue to contribute um, is, is precious. And I, there is so much action that comes out of it um, that is impressive that I have seen over my lifetime of almost six decades. So thank you everybody. Thank you, darling Bill. Barbara, Kim, all of you. So uh, first things, I will synopsize the things that I'm gonna provide tonight, provide that to Kim and Darlene to send out to you all for anybody who couldn't uh, make the meeting or had to drop out. Um, and I know that um, they're expected to be out by in a little bit in about 10 minutes. So I'll go quickly, but again, I'll be providing a recap that will be sent out to y'all and then uh, anyone is welcome to contact me at, at any time. Uh, and my email address will be on the, the, e uh, the, the uh, email recap that I send. Meanwhile, it's M-O-L-L-Y underscore Enright, E-N-R-I-G-H-T at Tempe.gov. And uh, Kim and Darlene have my contact info. So briefly and quickly, um, there were four points that I was either asked um, by um, your chairs to bring up. 
or that I thought would be relevant to you. The first is, is there going to be a north side uh, substation or at least a beat office? There's no significant updates to share with you at this time regarding a beat office or substation. PD continues to work with our city development folks. As you can imagine, land is extremely valuable at this time. Uh, it does not look like a, um, as a cap project that a north side substation would actually be realistic to, to build from the ground up. However, we are still actively working on potential sites for a beat office up here. There was a comment made earlier about length of time. Uh, if you have a question or have a concern about our police response, email me, I'm gonna follow up on that uh, for you. If you have a concern about our response on a specific call. Um, our, typic, our officers are typically not responding from the Apache station. Yes, that's where they're based out of, but I can tell you right now that station is empty most of the time because they are responding to calls. I'll share with you, we have under 200 officers allocated to patrol. That sounds like a lot. That's 200 total. Divide that by seven days of the week, by the 10 hour shifts during the day, and then officers who are injured or in court or on other emergency calls for service. So that's just to give you an example. It's not in the way of an excuse, but those are the realities of the number of officers on the street at any one time. But if we have failed to respond in a way that you need us, call me and that's part of my responsibility. We're gonna follow up and either explain or address it if there was a failure. Uh, the second piece was on the desert park preserve, the park issues, women's park and canal, Evelyn Home and Park. We engage in weekly encampment cleanups. We do legal notification process to tenants who are there by their constitutional right. We provide notice to folks. We provide them resources, but we do do cleanups. There is a tsunami. It's not new, but it is increasing. We always see a seasonal increase in the number of homeless folks in Arizona during the colder months. But there is a schedule. The officers that are in my unit that I work with on my team, there are two of them, we work daily. It doesn't mean that there aren't other officers in patrol who also respond to the parks, they do. But a part of our mandate and our mission is in your desert preserve and the parks that I mentioned, as well as the parks citywide. So we respond to incoming calls for service about parks and we also have a schedule for the cleanup. We work with the city parks department. We work with the city solid waste department and the city council has granted significant funding annually, hundreds of thousands of dollars to do these cleanups. If anyone has uh, an encampment to report, not uh, needing necessarily a police officer on scene at the time because there's a life threat or suspicious activity. If there is an encampment, you can go online to city 311 and report that. And it's us that are gonna follow up on that as quickly as we can. Uh, the second, uh, the third point relates to the Motel 6 at 1612 North Scottsdale Road. For a de couple decades, Tempe PD has worked with the Motel 6s. We are gaining some traction that I have not seen in my career here. Um, specific to the Motel 6 that is here in your neighborhood, something that is new. Um, they have, the management has not willing, been willing in the past to invest in this. There is now uh, just newly in effect overnight security based on our recommendation. Overnight private security at the Motel 6, uh, basically the nighttime hours. So from dusk to dawn, uh, Kim, I'll provide you those exact hours. That's seven days a week. That should be very, very helpful. Um, they are looking at their budget to fence the back of the property. Um, that's a project in progress. If there is information about the fencing, I will provide that as soon as it was relayed to me. Two of the other officers uh, that I work with are um, focused on the Motel 6s in the city, including uh, that one. The third item that is helpful is that we have worked for a long period of time to with Motel 6 management, um, to, for them to discontinue accepting cash. There's all kinds of uh, crime related to taking cash. You hire somebody for $15 as a manager, they might take cash under the table. 
There's a lot of stuff that doesn't hit the account books. Uh, we know that there actually has been a crime to that effect that we've worked on, but um, credit and debit cards are now required that transitions are, uh, transactions are logged. Um, and it has been a long time coming. Again, I'll provide this in the recap to Kim and Darlene. Um, I'm going kind of quickly and I know it's five to eight. That's why I'm not pausing to stop for questions, but I will. Related to um, the police department and what we're doing, that is an update from the last time that we met. Um, the unit that I work with, we are part of patrol. We are part of broader patrol, all of our broader patrol, but we work on more the areas and the addresses that are seeing recurring calls for service and causing problems in, in our neighborhoods for our folks and with our businesses. So what we have done that is new is taken the officers that we do have. Um, we always look at the calls for crime, the high call for service, the high crime uh, business locations and uh, specific officers have been allocated to specific addresses. So they're running and responding to 911 calls to follow up non-emergency calls as residents need them to traffic collisions, shots fired, robberies, whatever may be occurring. And in between the officers that are on your beat up here, north of the river, what we refer to as the patrol area, the perimeter that is beat 11, north of the river Tempe, officers uh, are dedicated, specific officers. So there is a sense of ownership. We're still responding to calls for service there, but officers have been dedicated to those as much as they can. It's not just going there, it's making uh, the connections with the staff and the management. So some of those locations, not all, but currently some are the Papago Park and Tempe Women's Park, the Motel 6, the Quick Trip, the budget rental car, the human being, by the way, which was recently just in the past week sold. I, I don't know to whom and I don't have understanding as to what that's going to be, but I do have good information. One of my officers uh, was in contact with uh, the owner there. So the Shell gas station, the Cowtown Boots, the Goodwill, the Santa Fe Apartments, the Union Plaza complex uh, on Hancock, the Pollock Plaza here up on McKillops, the Food City and the, the Dunkin' Donuts, the Zone gas station and the Starbucks. So uh, we are uh, dedicating, deploying our officers in a way that they haven't been to these specific areas to see if we can also make a dent into the concern. Um, I do want to address one additional uh, point uh, that was raised about the vouchers. Um, they are housing vouchers, not necessarily homeless outreach vouchers. Um, oh, with no. emergency situation, uh, provide those to individuals who need housing. Some of them may end up using them at the, at the Motel 6 here in your neighborhood. However, I wanna say based on the significant investment of our taxpayer funds by Mayor Woods and the city council, um, there are 40 beds available for individuals in need of housing at the roadway in an Apache. And the council this Thursday night will be voting on an additional, to approve an additional 55 beds uh, at uh, the uh, Hotel River. And um, there's, there's one uh, just east of Rural Road on Apache. And the other one is at River and Apache just east. Um, so that will be 40 beds available, an additional 55 pending that council approves. However, council is the one that invested in this. So it, there's a, that formal process that will occur. There are also at any one time to Tempe um, available 30 beds in the East Mesa shelter that are specifically allocated for us in Tempe. Um, and we're working to add more in the future based on the need. We do know that congregate housing or large shelter housing can have some concerns with people gathered all in one large place. We do know that the hotel kind of model where individuals can have individual rooms gives them some privacy, some safety. And additionally, it helps us to do some one-on-one -on -one with those folks with our homeless outreach specialists and our crisis intervention specialists. Um, I will leave it to there. Um, there are, uh, again, I'll provide the recap and my emails. And if there are any additional questions 
um, that you have, I'm always available and I'll follow up if I don't have the answer immediately. Um, your police officers and human services were literally working together in crisis intervention and homeless on calls every single day. We house out of the same areas and we get that this is a big problem that's going to take all of us to work to get people off the street and into housing, particularly as we know there are many folks who are mentally ill and also self-medicating and have, then have addiction. So, but the more times that we can make contact and build trust, that is the goal so that homeless individuals will not be in your neighborhoods, in your alleys. Um, we all know that we all have big hearts, that homelessness is not a crime. However, we will do everything we can to get folks off the street and we're gonna offer them resources. We know many of them by name, our officers know individuals by name, they know our officers by name. And uh, in it, in it, we will absolutely address though violations and crime. So they're not mutually exclusive. They're not even two sides of the coin. It's part of the process. Um, so I'm still available. I'm gonna turn it back over to Darlene. And then um, I just thank you for your time, your attention and, and support and everything that y'all are doing. Thank you very much. Who does? Jennifer? If she if she's still on. Jennifer, are you still on? I, I certainly am. Hello, everyone. Hello, North Tempe. Jennifer, so Adam, our, can you our council is is online? Yes. Okay. Thank, thank you, Darlene. I uh, appreciate it. Uh, Molly, I just want to I just want to give you huge kudos. I mean, that presentation was spot on. It's exactly what we're you know, what we're working on. I'm going to be very proud to support another 55 beds uh, coming on online here to to help with our housing crisis and our homeless crisis. And I just want to just give you a shout out for such an informative presentation and and for everything you do for our community. And uh, nice to nice to see uh, virtually some people um, online. So thank you very much. And I'd be glad to answer any questions anyone may have. Anyone? Can I ask a question? Sure. Someone um, there. Um, sure. My name's Jackie. Um, I'm actually on the board of Concord Village in North Tempe. We are probably the extreme North Tempe, literally South Scottsdale is directly across the street. And, um, you know, I, I appreciate everything that everyone is doing. I know at this time in life, it's very hard. It's very hard for people who are considered normal or have a, your life hasn't been drastically changed by the virus or whatever's going on. Um, but is there any way that I know you guys are making an effort to reach out to the business owners and all of that, but that maybe in, I know in our area, especially there's a lot of housing communities that have boards or have, um, kind of like representatives for their neighborhoods that this information could be shared, you know, by you guys to us, because I know a lot of us are so frustrated with what's going on. And I try to look at like the city of Tempe website and that kind of stuff. Um, but that there's any type of newsletter or anything that we could share with our residents so that people know, hey, something's trying to happen. It's not going to happen overnight, but also to kind of include us in that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. Katie, that's a great point. And um, this is Laura with Neighborhood Services. I would be happy to get your email. And then if you have an email list that you want to distribute info to, uh, we put out information just about every Friday. And Molly's going to be putting out some notes from this meeting that you'd be able to share as well. So we would love to have your info. It's sometimes HOAs don't always get back to us when leadership changes. So Absolutely. Send me your email. I'm going to put my um, email in the chat. Okay, great. Email Thank help. you. Yeah, Thanks, we, Laura. Coldwell? Absolutely. Yes. Hi. We've worked together before on the Christmas light thing. I have your info. Yes, ma'am. You will receive a copy of all the information that I provided tonight. In addition, Laura and I team together. And thank you. Okay, great. That would, yeah, that would be great. Yeah, we're having a ton of issues in our area and people are frustrated. We're frustrated. I mean, we've gone as far recently as someone dug up conduit with our grounds to our buildings and stole the copper wire. And we're just like, uh, what do we do? You know, it's, it's, it's bad. <laughs> it's the worst I've ever seen it. And I've lived here 42 years. <laughs> wow. I, uh, ladies, 
my name is my name is Laura Stolberg. I live in Concord Village as well as Jackie does. So, uh, would you please include me on your mailing list as well? I yeah, would be, help, be grateful. Thank you. Yeah, Laura, can you put your uh, email yes. in the chat? That'd be great. I will. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, and North North Tempeans, you have some of the best in the city helping you out with this, Molly and Laura. So. I'm I'm really happy that you two are here tonight to to help the residents out and and try to get some solutions for them. Thank you, Jennifer. Yeah, thank what you. is your title, please? Uh, I'm I'm Tempe County member. Okay, thank you. You bet. And you're feel free free to reach out to me too at Jennifer underscore Adams at Tempe .gov anytime you'd like. Okay. Hey Jennifer. Yes. I everybody here that joined Jennifer was canceled have you told them I told them when we were offline did you tell them there no I I did it and and I have COVID right now and because the COVID spread is so horrible um we are postponing it actually not canceling but postponing it until February 8th so I'll be back up there February 8th and and I think things will calm down by then and have the join Jennifer at that time for bringing that up, Kim. So you'll be in the center, and I'd really encourage to get as many people there as possible, and I'll answer every question I, I can, and if I don't know the answer, I'll find the answer for you. Okay, and I wanna thank Lauren for, Laura, thank you for getting the Zoom thing up, because the gals in Concord Village really wanted to be part of this and could not attend, and so I think that it was really great and hopefully we'll get a lot better at doing this and interfacing yeah. but uh, yes, somehow thank you yeah no the... problem you guys we can do this more often it really is not too hard once you get used to it and i'm recording this hopefully the recording works and i'll post it so that people can listen to the meeting afterward oh that's that would really be good i really appreciate that and uh, i'll be contacting the gals at um Concord Village again because North Tempe Neighborhood Association you guys are part of our, our area and we really really care about you so I'm, I'm glad that you know it, it it usually takes a crisis to bring everybody together and I guess we're all getting together <laughs> yes well thank you for making zoom available tonight we we greatly appreciate it because we were able to join in thank you yeah anytime yeah. It, it's not as, yeah, it's not as hard as it seems. We can do this. <laughs> Thank you all. We've been the actually the multi gen center closed at eight, so we oh, probably okay. Can. I'll let you go. Thank Get you. Get the heck out of there, y'all. Good night. Good all night. right. Bye, guys. Bye. Harry. <laughs> what a crazy. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I think there's still on. I need to make sure. Okay. I'm closing it. Bye, y'all.